Hi everybody, saving is that part of disposable income that is not spent on goods and services in the economy. And savings is a determinant of AD. If savings increase in the economy, it means by default there is going to be less consumption taking place in the economy and AD will shift to the left. Remember, there are only two things that an individual can do with income that they earn. They can either spend it or save it. So if savings increase, it means consumption is decreasing. So savings is a determinant of AD by affecting consumption, the level of consumption in the economy. So what kind of factors can affect saving? Well, the level of real disposable income. Of course that can affect saving. Um, if incomes rise, we don't spend all of our money. Right? So if incomes rise, yes, consumption can increase, but saving can increase too. So the level of real disposable income can definitely affect the level of saving. Without income, you can't save, can you? In developing countries, this is a very big point. Even in developed countries like the UK, you know, the poor households save a very, very, very small percent of their income. Most of it has to go uh, in consumption activity. So the level of real disposable income is a key determinant of saving. Interest rates. Higher interest rates will encourage more saving. Why? Because the rate of return on savings is going to increase. If you uh, save your money in a bank account and interest rates are quite high, then you're going to get a nice rate of return on the money that you place in your saving account over a period of a year, which is a big incentive for you to save and therefore not to spend in the economy instead. So high interest rates increase the marginal propensity to save and therefore the level of saving in the economy. Low interest rates will do the opposite and will encourage more borrowing and spending and less saving in the economy. The level of consumer confidence. If consumer confidence is very low in the economy because people fear a recession coming up, they fear losing their jobs, or they think that their incomes are going to take a cut, then individuals are more likely to save money um, in preparation for that. So low consumer confidence encourages more saving um, and less consumer spending in the economy, whereas if there is high consumer confidence, that encourages more spending and less saving in the economy. This point here, number four, is very important for developing countries. The range and the trustworthiness of financial institutions. In developing countries, financial institutions like banks simply don't exist in the kind of volume that they do in developed countries, and often they are corrupt or non-trustworthy. They might be unofficial, which again reduces, of course, the incentive to save in them. Another key barrier is just education in developing countries. Do individuals or families know about the benefits of saving? about how a bank operates, about what interest rates are, maybe not, and that could be a barrier to saving as well. But all of these reasons, a poor range of financial institutions, corrupt uh, banks, non-trustworthy banks, unreliable banks, unofficial banks, can all prevent saving taking place, especially in developing countries, you see this a lot. Tax incentives like ISIS, um, so the government policies basically to encourage more saving. An ISA is an individual saving account, where you can have um, savings and earn returns on savings which are tax-free up to a certain threshold. So basically this is a, a way to save money to protect yourself from paying income tax or, or capital gains taxes on the savings that you put in bank accounts. So incentives like this can encourage more saving, especially as now the, the ISA tax allowance is around £15,500 right now. It's a very high tax allowance on savings. That very much encourages savings and therefore can increase the level of saving in the economy, the more that you have policies that encourage it. Um, an economist called Modigliani argued that the age structure of the population has got a big role to play in the level of savings. He argued that um, the middle-aged um, individual is more likely to save their money for their children and for their own retirement, whereas those who are younger, so um, you know, between the ages of 15 and 30 in the economy, more likely to spend their money and the pensioners, so those who are aged above 60 years old, are more likely to spend their money too. Whereas those who fit in between that gap are more likely to save their money. So the middle-aged population are likely to save their money. So if you have a population where that is the majority of your population, then likelihood is that savings are going to rise if you believe the thesis of Modigliani. So here are some of the key uh, determinants of saving in the economy. Hope that makes sense. I'll see you all in the next video.